In the ancient time, amidst the cradle of Macedonia, there emerged a figure whose name would echo through the ages as a testament to both the heights of human ambition and the depths of its consequences. Alexander, born of royal blood on a fateful night, was destined for greatness, his path foretold by omens and prophecies that danced in the flames of destiny. Born in the shadow of legends, Alexander's lineage traced back to the heroic lineage of Achilles, the stuff of myth and legend. Yet, from his earliest days, it was clear that Alexander was no mere mortal. He bore the mark of destiny upon his brow, a fire in his eyes that spoke of a future writ large upon the canvas of history. Under the watchful gaze of his father, King Philip II, and the enigmatic whispers of his mother, Queen Olympias, Alexander grew, nurtured by the tumultuous winds of Macedon. It was said that even in his youth, he possessed a wisdom beyond his years, a hunger for knowledge that burned brighter than the sun that bathed the hills of Pella. But it was not merely intellect that marked young Alexander. No, it was his courage, his audacity, his unyielding spirit that set him apart from his peers. At the tender age of twelve, he faced down the untamable Bucephalus, a beast of legend whose fury had bested even the most seasoned of horsemen. Yet, with a heart unbound by fear, Alexander tamed the wild steed, forging a bond that would transcend the bounds of mortal understanding. As the years passed, Alexander's destiny unfurled like the sails of a ship bound for distant shores. Guided by the hand of Aristotle, the philosopher whose wisdom illuminated the darkest corners of the mind, Alexander delved into the depths of knowledge, his thirst unquenchable, his hunger insatiable. But it was not in the halls of academia alone that Alexander's greatness lay. No, it was upon the battlefield, amidst the clash of steel and the cries of the fallen, that he would etch his name into the annals of history. At the age of sixteen, he stood as regent of Macedonia, his father's empire entrusted to his care. And when the opportunity for glory arose, Alexander seized it with both hands, leading his cavalry against the sacred band of Thebes, a force thought invincible by mortal men. In the crucible of Kyrenia, Alexander's valor shone like a beacon in the night, his cavalry cutting through the ranks of the enemy like a scythe through wheat. And though the battlefield ran red with the blood of the fallen, it was Alexander who emerged victorious, his name writ large upon the scroll of destiny. But greatness, it is said, comes at a price. And for Alexander, that price was steep indeed. His reign, marked by conquest and ambition, was also stained by the blood of innocence, by the screams of the vanquished, by the whispers of those who dared to defy him. For every triumph, there was a tragedy. For every victory, a sacrifice. And as Alexander's empire expanded, so too did the shadows that lurked at its edges, the specter of death haunting his every step. In the end, Alexander's legacy was as vast and as complex as the empire he had forged. A tale of triumph and tragedy, of conquest and ambition, of brilliance and brutality. And though the sands of time may have long since swallowed his name, the echoes of Alexander's deeds still linger a testament to the indomitable spirit of humanity, for better or for worse. Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey, Battle of Granicus. Alexander's first invasion was Battle of Granicus in 334 BC. His conquest of the Achaemenid Empire unfolds with the drama and intensity of an epic saga, each chapter etched with the blood, sweat, and valor of those who dared to shape the destiny of nations. It was in the year 334 BCE that Alexander, the young king of Macedonia, embarked on his audacious campaign across the Hellespont, the gateway to Asia Minor. With his army of Macedonian phalanxes, renowned for their discipline and prowess, and a contingent of Greek allies, he set forth to challenge the might of the Persian Empire, ruled by King Darius II. At the Battle of Granicus, the clash of civilizations reverberated across the land, as Alexander's forces met the Persian satraps in a contest of will and steel. With the sun hanging low on the horizon, casting long shadows over the battlefield, the fate of empires hung in the balance. But it was Alexander's cunning tactics and unwavering resolve that carried the day, securing a decisive victory and laying the foundation for his inexorable advance into Persian territory. With the scent of victory still fresh in the air, 
Alexander turned his gaze towards the formidable city of Halicarnassus, a bastion of Persian power whose towering walls stood as a testament to the indomitable spirit of its defenders. As dawn broke on the horizon, the Macedonian army encircled the city, their banners unfurled in the morning breeze, as they prepared to lay siege to its stout defenses. The siege of Halicarnassus would test the mettle of Alexander's army like never before. Week after week, the Macedonians hurled themselves against the city's ramparts, their determination unyielding in the face of adversity. But the defenders, led by the valiant Memnon of Rhodes, proved to be a formidable foe, their resolve unshaken by the onslaught that awaited them. Day turned into night, and night into day, as the clash of arms and the thunder of war echoed ceaselessly against the city's walls. Alexander's engineers constructed towering siege towers, battering rams pounded relentlessly against the gates, and catapults launched fiery projectiles into the heart of the city. Yet still, Halicarnassus held fast, its defenders fighting with the ferocity of lions, their blades flashing in the darkness. But Alexander was not one to be deterred by adversity. With each passing day, he studied the city's defenses, probing for weaknesses and vulnerabilities to exploit. And when the moment of opportunity finally presented itself, he struck with the full force of his might. In a final, desperate assault, Alexander's forces stormed the breach in Halicarnassus's walls, their swords flashing in the sunlight as they clashed with the defenders in a frenzied melee. The air was thick with the cries of the dying and the clash of steel as the fate of the city hung in the balance. And then, in a moment that seemed to stretch for eternity, the defenders faltered, overwhelmed by the relentless onslaught of Alexander's army. With a mighty roar, the Macedonians surged forward, their banners held high as they poured into the city like a tide unleashed. As the dust settled and the smoke cleared, Halicarnassus lay in ruins, its once proud towers reduced to rubble by the fires of war. Yet amidst the devastation, a new dawn had dawned, for Alexander's conquest of the city marked another triumph in his inexorable march towards glory. The fall of Halicarnassus would echo through the annals of history as a testament to the indomitable will of Alexander the Great and the unwavering courage of his Macedonian warriors. And as they stood amidst the ruins of the city, their banners unfurled in victory, they knew that their journey was far from over, for greater challenges lay ahead on the path to immortality. The Battle of Gagamila, a symphony of steel and strategy, unfolded as Alexander the Great, with his valiant Macedonian warriors, stood poised to challenge the might of the Persian Empire. From the blood-soaked fields of Granicus to the towering walls of Halicarnassus, Alexander's march had been relentless, each conquest a testament to his indomitable will and strategic brilliance. Yet, Gagamila beckoned as the ultimate test, a crucible where the fate of empires would be decided in the crucible of combat. Before the clash of arms, Alexander, like a masterful tactician, surveyed the battlefield with eyes keen and mind sharp. He recognized the lay of the land, the ebb and flow of the terrain, and saw within its folds the threads of victory waiting to be woven. With his trusted generals by his side, he crafted a plan that would harness the strength of his forces and exploit the weaknesses of his foe. The Persian army, vast and formidable, stood arrayed before him, a sea of spears and shields stretching as far as the eye could see. Yet Alexander, undaunted by the odds, knew that victory lay not in numbers alone, but in the cunning of his stratagem and the valor of his warriors. As the battle commenced, Alexander unleashed his cavalry like a thunderbolt upon the Persian lines. With the sun at their backs and the wind in their sails, his horsemen surged forward, their sarissas gleaming in the sunlight as they drove deep into the heart of the enemy host. Meanwhile, his infantry, armed with battering rams and siege towers, advanced steadily, their determination unyielding in the face of adversity. Amidst the chaos of battle, Alexander's genius shone like a beacon, guiding his troops with precision and purpose. He exploited the weaknesses of the Persian formations, using catapults to rain destruction upon their ranks and siege towers to breach their defenses. With each maneuver, he outmaneuvered his foe, turning their own strength against them and driving them ever closer to defeat. Despite the ferocity of the Persian resistance, 
Alexander's resolve remained unshaken. With a lion's courage and a strategist's mind, he led his troops with unwavering determination, rallying them to ever greater feats of valor. And as the sun set upon the blood-soaked plains of Gogamila, it was Alexander who emerged victorious, his banner held high amidst the wreckage of his vanquished foes. Lebanon and Syria From the sun-drenched shores of Tyre to the rugged cliffs of Halicarnassus, Alexander's march carved a path of triumph through the heart of the ancient world. With sarissas raised high and banners unfurled, his legions laid siege to the citadels of Persian power, their resolve as unyielding as the mountains themselves. At the gates of Halicarnassus, where the walls rose like defiant giants, Alexander's siege engines thundered with the fury of a tempest unleashed. Battering rams crashed against stone, siege towers loomed like titans of war, and catapults hurled death upon the defenders with relentless precision. Through the din of battle, Alexander's forces pressed forward, their determination unshakable, their will unbreakable. And as the dust settled upon the ruins of Halicarnassus, victory belonged not to the mightiest fortress, but to the bravest heart. For in the crucible of war, Alexander had forged his legacy in blood and fire, a testament to the triumph of strategy over strength of intellect over adversity. But it was not just the siege of cities that marked Alexander's conquest. It was his mastery of the battlefield, his brilliance in the art of war. At Issus, where the fate of empires hung in the balance, Alexander faced the might of Darius III himself. Outnumbered and outmatched, he stood undaunted, his sarissas gleaming like spears of destiny in the sun. With the thunder of hooves and the flash of steel, Alexander's cavalry charged like a tidal wave, crashing upon the Persian lines with the force of a hurricane. And as phalanxes clashed and arrows rained down like death from above, Alexander's genius shone like a beacon in the darkness. Through the chaos of battle, he led his forces with unmatched courage and cunning, turning the tide of war with the ferocity of a lion unleashed. And so, as the sun set upon the plains of Issus and the cries of the fallen echoed into the night, victory belonged not to the mightiest army, but to the greatest commander. For in the crucible of combat, Alexander had proven himself not just a conqueror, but a legend whose name would echo through the ages like a hymn of triumph. In 332 BC, Alexander the Great's conquest of Egypt marked a pivotal moment in his campaign to establish one of the largest empires the world had ever seen. A.S. Alexander set foot upon the shores of Egypt in 332 BC, he faced a challenge unlike any he had encountered before. Here, amidst the fertile banks of the Nile, he sought not just conquest, but the hearts and minds of a weary people, yearning for liberation from Persian oppression. With the wisdom of a sage and the heart of a lion, Alexander understood that to conquer Egypt, he must first win its people. He cast aside the trappings of a conqueror and donned the mantle of a liberator, seeking to portray himself not as a foreign invader, but as a savior sent by the gods. His journey to the Oracle of Ammonius at the Siwa Oasis was not merely a pilgrimage. It was a masterstroke of diplomacy. There, amidst the whispers of the desert winds, he was declared the son of Zeus Ammon, the divine heir to Egypt's ancient traditions. In the eyes of the Egyptians, Alexander was not just a king. He was a god in human form, destined to lead them to glory. With the blessing of the gods upon him, Alexander wasted no time in solidifying his control over Egypt. He appointed local officials loyal to his cause, winning the trust and support of the Egyptian elite. Through a delicate balance of power and persuasion, he integrated Egypt into his burgeoning empire, laying the groundwork for a new era of prosperity and stability. But Alexander's vision extended beyond mere conquest. It encompassed the creation of a new world order, forged in the crucible of cultural exchange and intellectual achievement. With the founding of Alexandria, he planted the seeds of a cosmopolitan metropolis that would blossom into a beacon of learning and enlightenment. Situated at the crossroads of trade routes between Europe, Africa, and Asia, Alexandria became a melting pot of cultures, attracting scholars philosophers, scientists, and artists from across the known world. Under Alexander's patronage, the city flourished, its streets alive with the vibrant tapestry of human endeavor. Yet, 
Amidst the splendor of Alexandria's bustling streets, Alexander never forgot the strategic importance of his conquest. The city's strategic location on the Mediterranean coast made it not just a center of culture, but a vital military stronghold, a bulwark against the forces of his enemies. Through his mastery of strategy and diplomacy, Alexander forged a new world order, uniting the disparate lands of Egypt under his rule and laying the foundation for a new era of Hellenistic dominance. In the annals of history, his conquest of Egypt stands as a testament to the power of vision, the triumph of diplomacy, and the enduring legacy of a true visionary. Iraq and Kurdistan The Battle of Gagamila stands as a testament to Alexander's mastery of warfare, a triumph won not merely through strength of arms, but through the artistry of strategy and the courage of conviction. The Battle of Gagamila, fought in 331 BC, stands as one of the defining moments in Alexander the Great's conquest of the Persian Empire. Positioned in the heart of Mesopotamia, near present-day Iraq, Gagamila was the culmination of years of military campaigns and strategic maneuvering by Alexander. Facing off against King Darius III of Persia, Alexander and his Macedonian army confronted overwhelming odds. Darius commanded a vast and diverse army, including infantry, cavalry, and war elephants, while Alexander's forces were comparatively smaller. However, what Alexander lacked in numbers, he more than made up for in strategy, leadership, and battlefield tactics. Before the battle, Alexander meticulously studied the terrain and devised a plan to counter the strengths of the Persian army. He recognized the advantage of the wide-open plains of Gagamila for his cavalry, which was the centerpiece of his army's strength. Additionally, Alexander exploited his opponent's weaknesses, particularly their reliance on the cumbersome war elephants, by implementing innovative tactics to neutralize their impact on the battlefield. As the battle commenced, Alexander led his forces with unmatched brilliance and courage. He personally led his cavalry in a daring charge, striking deep into the heart of the Persian lines, causing chaos and confusion among their ranks. With lightning speed and precision, Alexander's troops executed complex maneuvers, encircling and outflanking the Persian forces, disrupting their formations and sowing panic among their ranks. Despite Darius's attempts to rally his troops, the sheer ferocity and determination of Alexander's assault proved overwhelming. The Macedonians pressed their advantage relentlessly, driving deeper into the Persian lines and inflicting heavy casualties. As the battle raged on, it became increasingly apparent that Alexander's superior tactics and leadership had turned the tide decisively in his favor. In the end, the Battle of Gagamila resulted in a resounding victory for Alexander and his Macedonian army. Darius, realizing the futility of further resistance, fled the battlefield, leaving behind his army and much of his empire in Alexander's hands. The defeat at Gagamila shattered the might of the Persian Empire and solidified Alexander's control over Mesopotamia, paving the way for the further expansion of his conquests into Persia and beyond. The Battle of Gagamila epitomizes Alexander's military genius and strategic acumen. It was a triumph of intellect, leadership, and sheer audacity, marking a turning point in history and ushering in a new era of Hellenistic dominance in the ancient world. The conquest of Persepolis in the year 330 BC, amidst the arid deserts of Persia, where the sun blazed mercilessly upon the ancient city of Persepolis, a storm was brewing a tempest of steel and fire heralding the arrival of a conqueror whose name would echo through the annals of time. Alexander the Great With the determination of a lion and the might of a titan, Alexander set his sights upon Persepolis, the jewel of the Persian Empire, a bastion of wealth, power, and cultural splendor. For in its hallowed halls lay not just riches untold, but the very heart of his adversary's dominion. With the fury of a tempest, Alexander's army descended upon Persepolis, their sarissas gleaming like spears of destiny in the desert sun. Siege engines thundered, battering rams crashed against fortress walls, and catapults hurled death upon the defenders with unyielding fury. The defenders of Persepolis, proud warriors of Persia, fought with valor and desperation, their resolve as unyielding as the mountains themselves. But Alexander, the lion-hearted son of Zeus Ammon, was not to be denied. With the wisdom of a tactician and the courage of a hero, he led his forces with unmatched brilliance and resolve. 
Like a thunderbolt unleashed, his cavalry charged through the breach in the city's defenses, cutting down all who dared stand in their path. Amidst the chaos of battle, Alexander's army fought with the ferocity of a storm unleashed, their swords flashing in the desert sun as they carved a path of destruction through the heart of Persepolis. The clash of steel echoed through the streets, mingling with the cries of the fallen and the roar of flames that consumed the city's palaces and temples. As the smoke cleared and the dust settled upon the ruins of Persepolis, victory belonged not just to the mightiest army, but to the bravest heart. For in the crucible of war, Alexander had forged his legacy in blood and fire, a testament to the triumph of will over adversity, of courage over despair. And so, as the sun dipped below the horizon and the stars gazed down upon the scene of carnage, one name resounded through the ages like a clarion call. Alexander, conqueror of empires, architect of destiny, whose legend would endure long after the echoes of battle had faded into eternity. Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, Alexander the Great's campaign in Bactria and Sogdiana. In the rugged expanse of Bactria and Sogdiana, where the mountains kissed the sky and the winds whispered tales of ancient glory, Alexander the Great faced his greatest challenge yet. Here, Amidst the craggy cliffs and unforgiving terrain, the indomitable spirit of the Macedonian king clashed with the fierce tribes and defiant chieftains who stood as guardians of their ancestral lands. At the forefront of this epic struggle stood the Sogdian rock, a fortress perched defiantly atop a sheer cliff, its walls as formidable as the will of its defenders. Led by the wily chieftain Spitamines, the tribes of Sogdiana had retreated to this bastion of strength determined to defy Alexander's advance at all costs. But the Lion of Macedon was not one to be deterred by mere stone and rock. With the fire of ambition burning in his heart and the wisdom of Athena guiding his hand, Alexander devised a plan as audacious as it was bold. Recognizing the strategic importance of the Sogdian rock, he vowed to seize it from the grip of its defenders, no matter the odds. With the precision of a master strategist, Alexander launched a determined siege of the fortress, his army encircling its base like a coiled serpent ready to strike. But the sheer natural defenses of the Sogdian rock proved to be a formidable obstacle, thwarting every attempt to breach its walls with traditional siege tactics. Undeterred by the seemingly insurmountable challenge, Alexander summoned forth the spirit of bravery and daring that had defined his conquests thus far. With a promise of glory and reward, he called upon his men to scale the cliff and seize victory from the jaws of defeat. Amidst the cover of darkness, a lone figure emerged from the ranks of the Macedonian army, a warrior named Polyperkin, his heart ablaze with the fire of determination. With the skill of a mountain goat and the courage of a lion, Polyperkin led a band of elite climbers on a perilous ascent to the summit of the Sogdian rock. As the first rays of dawn illuminated the horizon, the defenders of the fortress looked on in disbelief as the Macedonian forces breached their seemingly impregnable stronghold. With the gates thrown open and the battle cries of Alexander's army echoing through the mountain passes, the fate of Sogdiana was sealed. The capture of the Sogdian rock was not just a victory. It was a triumph of will and determination, a testament to the indomitable spirit of Alexander and his men. With this bold stroke, the Lion of Macedon shattered the backbone of resistance in Bactria and Sogdiana, paving the way for the expansion of his empire into the heart of Central Asia. And so, amidst the rugged beauty of the Bactrian mountains and the whispered echoes of ancient legends, Alexander the Great etched his name into the annals of history as a conqueror without equal, a hero whose deeds would be remembered for all eternity. India Alexander's Incursion into the Indian Subcontinent in the year 326 BC, as the mighty Indus River roared and the Hydaspes River flowed, Alexander's army stood poised on the threshold of greatness. Across the banks, King Porus of the Parava Kingdom awaited. A warrior of legendary prowess, his army formidable, his war elephants towering like mountains. The Battle of the Hydaspes was a clash of titans, a dance of death upon the blood soaked earth. Porus, with his elephants and spears, sought to defy the march of Macedon, to halt the relentless advance of Alexander's legions. But the Lion of Macedon was not to be denied. 
With the cunning of Athena and the fury of Ares, he unleashed his cavalry like a storm, thundering through the ranks of Porus's army with the force of a hurricane. In a symphony of chaos and carnage, the battlefield became a canvas upon which the fate of empires was painted in blood. Elephants trumpeted, spears clashed, and the cries of the fallen echoed into eternity. But amidst the tumult of battle, Alexander's genius shone like a beacon in the darkness. With each stroke of his sword and each command to his men, he carved a path to victory, a path that would echo through the annals of history. As the sun dipped below the horizon and the rivers ran red with the blood of the fallen, Alexander emerged victorious, his name etched into the annals of time as a conqueror without equal. But the Battle of the Hydaspes was just the beginning, a prelude to the final act of Alexander's epic saga, for it was at the Hyphasis River, where the waters whispered secrets of distant lands and dreams of glory, that Alexander faced his greatest challenge yet. His army, weary and homesick, mutinied against their commander, their hearts filled with longing for the shores of Greece. Despite his pleas and promises of greater glory, Alexander bowed to the will of his men, turning his army westward and embarking on the long journey home. And so, on June 10 or 11, 323 BC, in the palace of Nebuchadnezzar II in Babylon, the Lion of Macedon breathed his last, his conquests and dreams of reaching the ends of the earth unfulfilled. Yet, his legacy endured, immortalized in the annals of history, as one of the greatest conquerors the world has ever known. Though Alexander's body may have returned to dust, his spirit lives on, a beacon of inspiration for generations yet unborn. For in the epic tale of Alexander the Great, the flames of ambition and the thirst for glory burn eternal, lighting the way for all who dare to dream of greatness. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more exciting content like this. Your support helps me keep creating and sharing with you.